I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make shapes using the warp feature in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial let's look and see what it is that we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you could draw a cup like this using the warp tools in Illustrator and then we're actually going to stack a few cups on top of each other and learn how to recolor them. So there are a lot of techniques going on in this video tutorial but the key one we're going to look at to begin with is using the warp tool to make shapes. I'm starting off in Illustrator here with a document that is 1000 by 1000 points in size but yours could be any size that you like. I don't want to have a stroke on my shape so I'm going to turn off my stroke and I'm just going to target a fill colour for now so I'm going to choose a blue. And one of the reasons why I like the warp tools is that they create some organic shapes that are very very smooth and you don't have to actually work on the shapes yourself because Illustrator will do it all for you. So we're going to start with the plate for our cup and saucer and this is just an ellipse. So I'm going to target the ellipse tool here and drag out a ellipse that I'm going to use for my plate. So something about this size is good. Just going to move it so it's a little more central in my diagram, in my illustration. And with it targeted I'm going to choose Effect and then Warp. And it doesn't really matter which of these effects that I choose because whatever I choose I can get access to all the others from this menu. So you don't actually have to choose the right one. And if you choose one and it doesn't work then you can easily switch to another one. Now we're going to start with this plate with the fish warp tool because it creates things that are sort of fish shape. But right now the fish shape is in the wrong direction because it is a horizontal fish and I want mine to be vertical so I'm going to target vertical here and you can see that immediately this is the kind of plate shape that I was using. It's just that this one bows out rather than sucks in and we can stop the bowing effect in a minute by using a different warp. But right now let's just get the fish shape that we want here. And I can just experiment with these settings. You can see that the more bend that I choose, the smaller this area is. So I want mine to be a little bit more than I had but not too much. So probably something like this is good. I've got it set at 67. But you can vary your amount not only according to your own personal taste but also your oval won't be exactly the same as mine. So you may want more or less. I'm also going to see if I can apply some vertical distortion here and how that's going to affect the shape. So I'm thinking actually I'm going to apply a little bit of vertical distortion just to get the shape that I want to start off with. So I'm going to click OK. And now my plate is going up where I want it to go down. Well I can solve that with another warp. So with the shape still selected I'm going to choose Effect and then Warp again and this time I'm going to choose Arc Upper. I'm asked if I want to apply a new instance of this effect which I do so I'm just going to click Apply New Effect and then I'm going to set this to Horizontal and I'm going to decrease my arc upper to make it a sort of sucked in shape. So you can see that upper can be used to give it a bow effect but it can also suck it in. So I don't want too much of a bend here but about that much is going to be good. Now I seem to have some vertical value set here so I can test and see if I want more or less of that or nothing at all. But I'm thinking that this is pretty good shape for me so I'm just going to click OK. So there is the saucer for my cup and saucer. Now my cup is a circle so I'm going to target the ellipse tool again. This time let's get a different colour so that we can see clearly what we're working with. I'm going to choose this sort of purpley magenta colour and I'm going to hold shift down as I drag out a circle and I want this to be my cup so I'm thinking about this as a good size. With the selection tool I'm just going to drag it into position so I can see roughly how it's going to look when it's on the plate. 
Now it would be probably handy for me if I put the cup behind the plate so I'm opening up my layers palette here and we can get to that by choosing window and then layers. And I'm just going to drag the path for the cup below the path for the saucer so the cup is going to sit on the saucer. And we're going to warp this and we're going to choose the upper warp again, effect, warp and we're going to choose arc upper. And I want a horizontal shape here. I'm just going to test these bends. So you can see that the more bend I add, the more curve I'm getting at the top of my cup. And I really like that curve, so I want quite a bit of that. But I also need to test and see if any of these values are going to give me something more interesting. Well, yes, vertical is starting to give me my cup shape. So I'm going to adjust vertical to get the nice bend in my cup. And then I'm going to have a look at the top bend a little bit more and see if I don't want quite as much as I had. So when I'm happy with the overall cup shape, I'm just going to click OK and that's given me my cup. And now we want the handle. And the handle is going to be an oval. So again, let's go and get the ellipse tool. Let's choose a different color. This time I'm going to make it green. And my handle is going to be a long ellipse. You can see that basically I've had a look at the shapes that would go towards a cup and saucer and a handle and said, well, a handle is sort of like a long, tall thing bent. Well, this is my long, tall thing and now we're going to apply the bend to it. So we're going to again select Effect and then Warp and we're going for Arc. And I want this to be a vertical arc because that bends it into this shape. And you can see that I've got a rounded end here that's a little bit thicker than this end here. I want that effect, but I want it the other way. So let's see what happens when I take my vertical in the other direction. Well, this is giving me something that is going to be a little bit more use in terms of being a handle for my cup. So I'm just going to give it perhaps a little bit more bend and just make sure that this end is to my liking. And when I'm happy with what I've got, I'm going to click OK. So this is the shape for my handle, but I'm thinking it's a little bit big. So I'm going to target the selection tool and just adjust down the original shape because that reduces the shape of my handle, the size of the shape of my handle. Now, if this is not quite right, I can edit it. To do that, I'm going to choose Window and then Appearance. And in the Appearance, you'll see that there is a warp here. You can see it's a warp arc. And if I click on that, I'm going to open up this panel again so I can make sure that I have enough of a bend on my shape here and click OK. And I think it needs to be just a smidge and smaller still. Now I need to rotate this around to be the handle of my cup, but look what happens if I try and rotate the shape as it is. You can see the shape's not rotating, it's actually distorting. And the reason for this is that the warp is being applied to this oval here rather than the oval I started off with, which was the oval that was upright. So I'm just going to put my oval pretty much back to where it was. And I want to rotate this finished shape. Now the way that I can do that is to expand this appearance. So instead of this oval, I'm going to have a shape that is actually this curve here. So with my oval targeted, I'll choose Object and then Expand Appearance. And now you can see my shape is actually this curve, not the original oval. And now I can rotate it and it's going to rotate perfectly. So let's take it down and make it the handle on my cup. And I can decide whether I want the handle in front of the cup or behind. I want it behind, so again I'm going to target this layers palette here and here is the path for my handle and I'm going to just drag it behind the cup. If it's on a lower layer in the layers palette, it appears behind the objects that are higher up in the layers palette. Now I've got my first cup, let's target each of these shapes and let's expand their appearance so that we can rotate them. Object, Expand Appearance and then here, 
target the cup and choose object expand appearance. Now that fixes these shapes to their current shape so I can do things with them. One of the things that I can do with them is to select over all three shapes, hold the shift key as I drag downwards and that will allow me to make this cup and saucer a little bit smaller. And I want them to be a little bit smaller because I want to stack two more on top. So I'm going to target this group of shapes and I'm going to group them because it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to see exactly what's happening. So let's choose object and then group. And in the layers palette here you can see we now have a single group. Let's just make the palette options a little bit bigger so that you can see them a little more clearly. Here's our group. So with this group selected I'm going to make a copy of it. Well I'm actually going to make two copies. Edit, copy and then edit, paste in place. And now let's do it again, edit, paste in place. And you can see here we have three groups of cups in our layers palette. Let's drag this one up to the very top and then let's target this one and drag it into the middle. And I want to flip this one so its handle is in the other direction. So I'm going to choose Object, Transform, Reflect and I'm going to reflect it over the vertical. If I click Preview you'll see that it's flipped and I'll click OK. And now I'm going to tip it a little bit and then just position it inside this other cup. And you can see it's over the top so I just need to drag it in the layers palette below the other one so it looks as if now it's sitting inside and above the other cup. I'm just going to move it into position. I'm just using the arrow keys to nudge it into position. And then let's take this one and we'll rotate it a little bit and drag and position it so that it looks like it's sitting inside this cup. But again we'll need to place it below this cup here so it looks as if it's actually inside it. So we're going to have to drag this one to the very bottom and now it looks as if it's inside this cup here which looks as if it's inside this cup here. So now we've got our three stacked cups. Let's have a look and see how we might recolor them. And I'm going to show you a really, really cool tool for recoloring objects. So I have this topmost cup selected. So here in the swatches palette, which I can get to by choosing window and then swatches, you'll see that there's a new color group icon here. When I have this group selected, I can choose new color groups. I'm going to do that and I want to create my color group from the selected artwork. So I'm just going to click selected artwork and click OK. And here are the three colors that we're currently using in this piece of art. With the piece still selected, let's click now on this icon which is edit or apply color group. And this opens up a panel where we can see the three colors that we're using. Well we can do things with those colors. For example, we could randomly change the saturation and brightness of the colors. Or we can rotate the colors around so that what was the handle color becomes the plate color and so on. We can also click Edit. And here we can change the colors by dragging on these handles. And what this allows us to do is to change the colors. The actual relationship between these three colors is still the same. You can see that they're always going to be almost perpendicular to each other. So bringing the slider in makes the colors a little less saturated and a little more like pastels. Dragging outwards gives us more saturated color. And we can drag some of these independently of the other. So we can change the saturation of individual colors. So if we find a color group that we like, let's just find something that looks pretty good for this shape and that looks a little bit different to what we had before. Let's go back to Assign and I think I might just rotate these around to get a different grouping. And when I'm happy with this, I'm just going to click OK and I'm prompted to save changes to my swatch so I'll click yes. And now I can go back and do exactly the same thing to this middle cup. Select it, click here 
to create a color group of the selected artwork colors. And then click on this circular icon to edit or apply a color group. I'm going straight into edit this time. Now this time I want to break the link between these colors so I'm just going to click here and this will allow me to recolor these cups or this particular cup without keeping the same relationship between the colors that I'm using. This time I can make the colors equally spaced around the color wheel instead of interacting with each other in a perpendicular arrangement. Let's click on Assign and let's see if a different mix of these colors, well this is a different set of saturation. This is a different rotation of the colors in the shape. When I find something I like I'll click OK and then Yes to saving the changes. So you see now how to create shapes using the warp feature in Illustrator. It allows you to create interesting organic shapes from simple shapes like circles and ovals. You've seen how to stack and rotate these shapes and why you have to expand the appearance to be able to successfully rotate them. And then you've seen a wonderful tool for recoloring your artwork. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.